Sentences, level two. In this mini lecture, we will be looking at academic, semicolon, and list sentences. So the first structure we're gonna talk about in this lecture is the academic sentence. So let's jump straight in. So the formula we're looking at here, and in particular, this development of ideas is a classic form of sentence writing that is sought after whenever you're doing academic writing. So it's great for essays, it's great for advanced paragraphs, it's great for analysis. Importantly, this is usually two clauses joined together and we're using a tool that is called the academic linking tool um, or sometimes just referred to as an academic link. Let's take a look at our formula. So already we've introduced several different formulas uh, in, in, in our previous lectures. The one that we're looking at today is very specific and this new, this highlighted blue structure in the middle is that academic linking tool that I just mentioned. So you can see we have clause number one, then we have a semicolon, then we have this weird family or this is actually a list of um, conjunctive adverbs they're called. But I like to use a little rhyme here, hum tatania. So we have the semicolon, hum tatania, and the comma. Then we have clause two, and then our period. So I make a little rhyme up to help students remember. I say hum tatania, hum tatania, hum tatania, me wanna see ya. So a little bit funny and ironic because the end of that rhyme is itself not grammatically correct. But the whole purpose behind the rhyme is to give you uh, a mnemonic device, a memory tool, so that you can remember the conjunctive adverbs. Very similar to fanboys, right? So fanboys is the mnemonic tool that we use to memorize for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. And those are our coordinate conjunctions. And we use those in our compound sentence formula. Now the reason I make that comparison is because both of the structures are similar in the fact that they join two clauses together and also in the fact that when we're doing either a compound sentence or academic sentences we're looking at ideas that are equally important um, which is different from our complex sentence structures which we've already learned about in the complex structures one idea is a dominating clause or a main clause or independent clause and the other clause is the subordinate or secondary clause. That's not the case with academic sentences. Usually these two ideas are equal and closely linked together. So let's take a look at our uh, conjunctive adverbs. So hum tatania, me wanna see ya. Hum tatania stands for how, how, however, moreover, therefore, thus, nevertheless, in addition, and additionally. Now each one of those words Again, we've, we've already heard these words before as well. They'll be used as linking words in paragraphs, but we can also use them in the middle of the academic sentence. Now, it's important for us to note that each of these words has a specific role. So however, we use this one when we want to say that the second clause is showing a different side of an argument or a different side of a position than the first clause. Moreover, is when there are the two clauses are on the same side of an argument. Therefore and thus are both showing a result. So the idea in clause one is cause causes the uh, idea in clause two. Nevertheless, this is the trickiest one out of the hum tatania family to utilize effectively and correctly. And basically it's like, it's almost like a however, but usually we see that this is a little bit more advanced and, and challenging. So we'll, we'll practice those sentences specifically in class and we'll talk about those ones a little bit more in detail. But it's showing contrast, obviously. Uh, and then finally, in addition and additionally, these are both the same as moreover. They show clause one, same side of the argument, clause two. So let's look at an example here. Literature, literature includes a range of story forms. Thus, learning a framework that can analyze all of them is powerful. And actually, we're going to be learning uh, uh, literature analysis moving forward throughout the entire semester. And we'll be talking about how to build our analysis using a set of windows that'll actually be transferable between poetry, short stories, novels, and plays. So this sentence here is, 
is very important and, and relevant to the rest of our semester. And it's true. If you think about literature, there's lots of different forms of literature. And, and that means that if we can find one tool, one framework to, to analyze all of them, it becomes a much more powerful framework. And we'll build one in this class. Okay, so that's the academic sentence. We'll have a chance to look at a few more examples closer to the end of the lecture. Okay, so let's jump straight into the second structure we're looking at today. This is the semicolon um, sentences. And semicolon sentences are also a powerful way to fix one of the most common errors in sentence writing, and that's the comma splice. And we'll actually be looking at the comma splice when we start to learn about common errors. Um, but this is just a little bit of a predictive tip. So let's check it out. So this formula is also used to join two clauses together. So now we've talked about three different ways that we can join two clauses together that we have equally important ideas in both clauses. And for semicolons in particular, if you're looking at joining the two clauses together, though the ideas in both of our clauses should be kind of tightly linked together. So let's move forward. Each of the clauses on both sides of our semicolon needs to have its own subject noun and of course its own main verb, which we also sometimes call the predicate. Here's our formula, very simple formula, but we will see that as we learn, a uh, clause can actually contain a few different phrases within it, and we'll learn how to build more complex clauses as we move forward into the semester. So we got C1, then we've got the semicolon, that's the punctuation mark in the middle there, and then we got C2, and then of course we need a period at the end to finish the sentence. Okay, here's a first example. Hockey is Canada's sport, semicolon. Canada has more gold medals in hockey than any other country, period. All right, perfect. Both clauses are dealing with hockey uh, and how hockey is important and, and, and uh, you know, loved in Canada. And the semicolon in the middle there shows these two ideas are both complete ideas. They have their own subject. They have their own verb. Um, they're connected and they're really kind of tightly linked to each other. Everything is in, in, in perfect order, so the semicolon sentence works here. Second one, poetry demonstrates the power of language, semicolon. Shakespeare, comma, the bard, comma, wrote inspired poems. Now there's something interesting in that second clause that we can see there. We can see that we've defined Shakespeare a little bit more deeply with what is called a removable phrase now, or a removable, a removable element. And in, in, in particular, we can use these short extra chunks of language, in this case it's a noun phrase, just to define a little bit more about what, what is in front or what is, what is just preceding the idea that is defining. But we don't worry about that too much. We're actually gonna learn sentences and how to inject these, these removable elements when we look at sentences levels four and five. We're, we're just on level two right now, but I'm just doing a little bit of a predictive teaching thing where I start to add some of the more advanced forms into our examples. And we could look at this, this sentence here and we could say, are the two clauses connected? So we got poetry on the, in the first clause, we got Shakespeare in the second clause and poems as well. We talk about the power of language and then Shakespeare's known to, as the bard, which, which basically means someone who is a, is a storyteller. And so yes, I think that these two different clauses are connected to each other. And so again, the semicolon sentence would be a proper choice for this type of example. Well, let's move on to our third and final type of sentence. So list sentences, and sometimes I call the list sentence the gateway to the thesis because within a thesis you usually have a list at the end. And in fact, just to be a little bit more predictive as I was talking about in the last slide, quite often a really solid structure for a thesis is to have a semicolon sentence at the beginning and then join a list sentence to it at the end. But we'll get into that again later in our learning about sentence, the, the different levels of sentence writing. Okay, so let's jump forward. These sentences are used when you want to write about a list of items. Seems, seems pretty direct, pretty obvious, but we like to state things uh, clearly. So list sentences, okay, so I've already mentioned this, they also make up the second half of thesis statements. So let's look at two different formulas that I like to use to write list sentences. So formula a, or list formula A, we have clause one, then we use a colon, and the colon 
is the classic punctuation mark to set up a list. Now, there's some debate in writing um, circles about whether or not you need the comma after item two. It's actually called the Oxford comma. And for my class, I would like to see the Oxford comma. That's my preference. Some teachers don't like it. You have to check with your teacher to see what they want here. So we've got clause one, which would state the core idea. Then we have the colon, and then we have the list of the elements or components of that idea that you're writing about. So we have C1 colon item one comma, item two comma, and item three. This is the structure I would like for my list sentences. There's another way to set up the punctuation here or to set up the introduction of a list sentence. So let's look at that as well. So we'll call this list formula B. So again, you have your clause one, which is kind of your core idea that you're trying to set up or prove. Then we have a comma and we use the linking word including, and then we jump into our list, item one, comma, item two, comma, and item three. So you can choose the colon or you can choose comma including. Those are two different ways to introduce a list. All right, so last slide here of our presentation more examples of our level two sentences. And what I'll do is I'll actually open the, I'll open the sentence example and then I'll take a minute and ask what formula is this? So while you're watching the video, just try quickly to identify which of these three new formulas we're looking at. Example one, Shakespeare wrote the most powerful poetry for several reasons, colon, his imagery, comma, his power of rhyming, comma, and his clever use of alliteration, period. What type of formula is this? If you said it's a list sentence, and in particular it's list formula A, ding, 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 you would be correct. Hiking regularly has several, several benefits, comma, including cardio fitness, comma, stress relief, comma, and leg strength, period. What formula do we have here? If you said that this is list formula B, you'd be bang on. Number three. Hamlet struggled to decode his dilemma. Semicolon, nevertheless, comma, he failed until it was too late, period. Which formula do we have here? If you said that this is the academic sentence formula, you'd be right. Last little test item here. There is no replacement for hard work, semicolon. Submitting assignments on time is a core companion to raw grittiness. Which formula do we have here? If you said that this is a semicolon sentence, ding, 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 you would be correct. Okay, so this is sentences level two. You can watch the video as many times as you need to to become familiar with them. Please practice writing these new three formulas of sentences.